What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about the Tales of Tribute, specifically how you can power level yourself up. So we're going to be going over how to power level yourself, the rewards that kind of go with that, and the reasons to do so, as well as the stuff that you get for get doing it. So let's kind of talk a little bit about Tales of Tribute, but we're just kind of being given a super thousand foot overview. So this is Tales of Tribute. You can see that I'm currently ranked 173rd. Uh, you can see in the bottom right hand corner that I am an adept level 5. I thought to myself today, wow, I really just want to do some research on how I can power level this bad boy. And I found an answer on what I think is the best way to do it. So I thought before I actually start power leveling myself more, let me show you guys like how it's been going for me, what my thoughts are, and kind of the reason I'm doing it. So, you'll see that I'm actually just standing next to a random player. Uh, an AI. Now, why an AI versus a player? So for those of you who don't know, while an actual player gives you significantly more rewards for the Tales of Tribute, there's actually a lot of good reasons to play the AI, and we're going to be talking about that now. So, as you guys are well aware, everyone picks two decks, the AI picks first, but this is where the, the key begins. So, our little AI boy has already lost the game. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how did he lose? All he's done is pick two decks. So this kind of brings us to an interesting concept for those of you who play Tales of Some Tribute, you guys are probably well aware of that you can turn all if all the patrons are facing you, you win the game. So you want to pick card decks with easy patrons to flip, which is why I'm going to pick the Duke of Crows and then I'm going to pick Grandmaster whatever his name is. The so and I will also highlight on screen any deck that you can instantly flip within the first 6 hands of a game which means within six moves you can win regardless of what cards you pick up or not you can win within just six turns why that's so op too is is that if i was to you know concede this match say i did not say he picked a smart deck there's no downside to that i lose nothing by by leaving early so what we are going to do, since we are not going to be able to generate enough power this turn to purchase the power flip, we are going to utilize our gold to buy one of these. That way we can sacrifice it later on, and then we are going to flip that. Another option that we could also go with too would be getting this two power so that in, you know later down the road we can also flip this card. But you know each one will work as you know pros and cons of picking different cards here. The AI will also always sacrifice one card over in the first few moves of each hand. So you're able to always get some decent cards that way. Now, he's even flipping over. Ooh, see now he's given us a really nice move because now I don't even have to worry about buying uh, another card. What I can do now is just flip this. That'll give us three gold. Now we're two moves away. All we need to do is generate one turn where we sacrifice a card. And then the turn after that, we just have to pay three gold. And we've won the game. We'll get ourselves our 60 rank points. We'll get ourselves a nice little chunk of XP. And we'll be able to go from there. It'll be, it'll be over. So we are going to, on this turn, I think I'm going to sacrifice... Um, just because I don't want to have to try to redraw that card again. But, you know, as a bit of a trade-off, what we're going to do is buy two cards just so that they're in the rotation just in case this game would go a little long. You know, we'll have extra cards to you. But we'll be able to afford it this turn. So unless the AI becomes intelligent, uh, which doesn't seem to very happen very often, um, we'll win. Yep, we've won the game. So all we have to do now is wait for this to end. And um, we'll talk a little bit about why I'm doing this and farming it in this way. So I'm a huge fan of furnishing uh, items. So when you see things in the achievement store that are, you know, attached to furnishings, you know, I have to, you know, I, I become interested. So this is the Tales of Tribute, you know, achievement section. You can see that I've been working through a lot of it. And um, you can see kind of the ones that I'm working on. So I want this, obviously, uh, complete the following achievements because then I get the furniture. And then there's a couple other things in here that I wanted also. Yep, so here's the furniture deck display. So I have to unlock all the decks. Now, how do you unlock the decks? Basically, what happens is is that every time you you know get to the next like you know quest marker point, which is about every two level up. So you can see I'm level five. So I believe at level seven there'll be another quest for me to complete. Uh, and that will give me the Red Eagle deck. And then after that, I get the ability to cha like challenge all the masters to get the Sorcerer King deck. So that's the reason why to level this bad boy up, is it, it increases the, the quest line 
you know, for you guys to complete. Similar to like the Mages Guild, Fighters Guild, Sigic Order. You could you level it up, you get a quest, you know, every so often. Sometimes it's every two, sometimes it's every one, depending on the quest line, but it's the same kind of concept, except this isn't really attached to like an actual player skill where you can see with your achievements and whatnot. You know, this is just, you know, tied to, you know, that little area that we were in. So we're going to challenge him again just to see if anything goes awry so you guys can really see the full method here because I'm going to be grinding this probably for the next three hours just to see how fast it goes. So he's picked. Let's see if he picks something bad. Nope, he's going to pick exactly what we want him to. So we'll be able to do the exact same thing. Here's the best part about doing this too is, is it takes a fraction of the time that it would to, to go against another player. Now, the only hiccup that can make this go longer is he will purchase this card every so often. And that sometimes will cause um, him to actually activate a patron. However, he did it where he has the ability to purchase no patron, so we don't have to worry about it because he's uh, he's already scuffed it. So we don't have to worry about that. And we're going to see the hand we have. And the only thing that we're going to really need to try to keep a lookout for is something that's going to give us power. Uh, because the decks that we have don't really generate power, except this card generates one. We will need to generate two power from somewhere to get that card. So that's just going to kind of want to be what we're going to keep an eye out for on. But in the meantime, we're going to let him do most of the card flipping. We're just going to work on flipping as many patrons in the meantime as we can until we can find something to give us two power. It usually can all be done within six turns. Um, ideally, in a perfect world, what he would do is pick the... Um, the other deck that we don't have access to. Oh, see, we'll be able to utilize that card. And we'll be able to buy this. And we don't have our sacrifice card, so we're going to have to let this go a little bit longer. And I think we may go to the turn after and hopefully redraw our two power card, or he flips a card that we're able to purchase. Um, but again, you know, this it's very simple. Your goal is not to play any sort of long game or anything like that at all. Your goal is simply to win as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Um, that's that's going to be your whole goal for you guys to do here. You can see that he's starting to draw our dud cards. Or you can see that we did not get any of the cards that we need. However, this pretty much guarantees that the next turn we will get the cards that we need. Uh, so, you know, we will... And he actually sacrificed a card. So the AI recognized that we were winning in a very particular way, but that's going to be okay. We'll just, what we'll do now is, is we'll purchase a card and then on the flip, so we'll flip that one and then we just need to sacrifice a card. So you can see that sometimes the AI does kind of pick up on what you're doing, uh, but generally what it will do at the beginning is sacrifice an actual treasury card to the treasury. So it really doesn't have the option to do anything else. And as long as he doesn't flip on this turn, we'll be able to win. And he did not, so we will be able to sacrifice this card and we will win so even when the AI gets a little bit smart and you go oh please you know you really you could still win we've done two games now the video is not even going on for eight minutes we've gotten 60 points so it's very very efficient and you also farm rewards coffers so you can get you know some decent rewards coffers and then open those as well you know so those are always nice now they will only be green but you can see crimson nerd roots nothing to you know snub you know Dragon Ball, nothing, you know, that you, is all really, really good things. So now I'm going to kind of do my preamble uh, where I tell you guys about the giveaways that we do on YouTube, all the different things. So basically all you have to do is leave a comment on the video. And the question of the day is, is do you enjoy Tales of uh, Tamriel? Do you think it's fun? Do you enjoy farming for it? Uh, do you enjoy the sets that it kind of brings? Do you think there should be more decks? Do you like the concept where all the decks are kind of mashed together? Just let me know what you guys' comments and thoughts are in the comments below. And uh, YouTube has also been really over-suggesting a lot of my videos, so this is also me apologizing uh, for any of my old videos. It's a constant like thing where I try to get better and better with uh, video crafting, so I do apologize if you know some of the old videos are a little janky and wonky, but... I have a really funny video coming for you guys tomorrow. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this one. And I don't have a like goal or a like thing on this video um, because we're still waiting to see on the last video that I put out on Friday to see what you guys' pick. But if this hits 50 likes, I'll take something else from that video and we'll do two. So 50 likes on this video, we'll do it. We'll do the second thing. Well, the leading thing I believe right now is I have to do a Battlegrounds naked. 
and win. So if that if it gets 50 likes, we'll be doing that. I think the second place right now is, is I have to survive 15 minutes while with a bounty in, in town without sneaking or something like that. So stay tuned for those at the end of the whatever the next videos are, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. You better remember to like and subscribe to Jake Clips. Or you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you.